Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we're gathered here to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first remember our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned, thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you. And for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, And on your wondrous works I will meditate. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. 
Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They should call forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. Lord, have mercy upon us. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven, proclaim at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, our God, heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry, where you in power are seated, Lord God, the death For you alone are holy, the Lord, forever and forever, be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone are Lord most high. In God the Father glory. Amen. Our glad reply. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love, you will rescue us from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you. As many as come out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all generations. I have set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenants between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant 
that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule o'er the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. And our epistle reading is from Ephesians. Chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to their power and work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy Gospel, according to Mark, the sixth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea. And he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. 
And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves. But their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment and as many as touched it were made well. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the gracious and loving name of Jesus and God who created all things, including all the water. Amen. What is going on? The world is out of control. It seems to be spinning sideways or the wrong way and headed in the wrong direction. We have in Genesis a clear picture of our world and what's really going on. Have you heard about the conspiracies? All kinds of them. Now, I don't know if any of those are fully true, how accurate the ones are that I've heard about in the last several months or last few years. However, the Bible describes a worldwide conspiracy from the time of Adam and Eve's fall. A conspiracy that involves not just the devil or a few, but involves all of you, all of us, and our fallen nature. The beautiful description at the very beginning, the big picture, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and God shows us this glorious creation event and a beautiful garden, paradise. The problem is it only goes through chapter 2. Then you get to chapter 3. In chapter 3 and the fall. This is the only Sunday in the entire three-year or one-year lectionary where we deal with the flood. Chapters 6 through 9 of Genesis. And so just to catch us up a little bit. After the fall, then there comes shortly thereafter the first murder, Cain and Abel. Chapters 4 and 5 continue to describe that when people multiplied, so did sin. And so did their actions in sin. Selfish lusts leading to violence. And what we hear then when we get to chapter 6 is that God finally says that's enough. Though we try to fix things ourselves, we try to dress it up, or maybe with our great technology, we think we can cover it up or make it look better. But I'm afraid that many of our sophisticated technological advances end up being used again by our fallen nature in this great conspiracy to only mass produce the evil intentions that are already in that old fallen nature that clings to us, that follows us. After the flood, in chapter 8, verse 21, he lays it out. And the Lord said in his heart, the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. That is, even the little ones that are in the congregation are battling this same issue, this grand conspiracy that involves not just the devil or not just people who aren't in church today or on the other side of the world or the others, but our own sinful nature. And here God steps in when he sees how things are spiraling out of control. He finally says this has to stop. And he judges the world in a way that shows what our sin also deserves if it's allowed to run. The consequences of sin are death. Hateful, destructive, sinful hearts, if left unchecked, destroy each other. It's all about me at the expense of the world, if unchecked. And so in chapter 6, verse 6, God lays out the isn't this the saddest verse of the Bible? It grieved God that he had created mankind. 
That doesn't mean he made a mistake. That doesn't mean he would take it back. That means God completely, from the bottom of his heart and the depth of his heart, however you can describe the Almighty, it's sorrow by sin, how deeply it hurt him. And God will not allow it to continue. It has to end. Using his own creation, God released judgment upon sin, upon the world, upon all of it, the entire globe. And he did so using what seems to me like a good part of his creation. Water. Water is a good thing. I love water. Especially this time of the year when it's hot and dry. You notice the fairies in the Puget Sound get really busy. Those who live on the islands have a problem getting to and fro because the rest of us want to go out on these warm, nice days to get close to the water and to see the islands. But I only remember twice in my life when I've been far enough out into the water. Now I'm speaking to some of my sailing buddies. <laughs> far enough out where I could not see land in any direction. And that was only, here's a sailor in the front, that was only when I was safely aboard a cruise line and it was a big enough boat that um, it didn't feel like I was even on a boat. Sure. It was a ship. It was huge. But in every direction, no land in sight, nothing. And I'm imagining myself, as I have when I'm paddling around in the lake or somewhere pretty safe, when there's not a boat around, and I usually have a life jacket on, but I'm just floating and there's nothing around me what it would be like, might even say what it is like to be in an ocean where there's no land, no boat, no life preserver, nothing. Such is our condition in our sin. And God allows us to see it, to experience it, as we read chapter 6 through 6 and 7 specifically, he wants us to understand that this engulfs us. That we can't swim long enough against it. We can't hold our breath. There's nothing that can rescue us except for God himself. God, the way he describes it, he allows the land that he separated at creation to be engulfed. And the way it's described as if he's been holding it back, but he opened the floodgates of the heavens and of the earth itself and allowed this water to come out and consume all those who were in sin in the entire world, except, except Noah. Except Noah, who as scriptures say, found grace. Didn't earn it, didn't have it on his own. Grace means it was a gift, it was given to him. And to his, presumably, he followed through with that grace, taught his sons and their wives. So there were eight in all, Noah, his three sons, and their wives. Eight in all, and God would pour out his grace even as he poured out water to wash away the sin of the world. Oh, what a picture. Yeah, it is kind of a conspiracy, you might call it. That from the beginning of the time, the devil wants us to drown with him. He wants to take us down. It's an awesome and even terrifying thought. However, in the midst of this, God sends a ship. If you call it a boat, it's a big one. Some of us who uh, went to the LWML convention had the opportunity to go see a life-size replica in Kentucky. That's about 450 feet long. That's a big boat. Can you call that a ship, Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's incredible for me to imagine. And then building this out of gopher wood and by hand. And they give us some idea of the technology that may have been used that was current in the times and a very wise and gifted and God-fearing and led man named Noah and his sons over many decades build this ship. 
This boat is a picture of the church. And some of you know that in the, this, what we call a sanctuary here, where I'm standing, this special place where God's altar, word, and sacraments uh, come from. It's called the chancel. Sometimes you hear us call the entryway the narthex. And then guess what this is called in here? This part of the sanctuary where you're sitting? They call it the nave. The nave from Latin, navis. Navy. Navigation. That upside down, wouldn't this thing kind of look like an ark if you flipped it upside down with these beautiful wooden beams and the wooden top? Can you imagine this being part of the ark? That this is a picture of, of God's grace that comes to us with his word. And then our text today in chapter 9 is the promise. That God made a promise, and all of this is about God and his promise and his covenant. We couldn't figure it out. We couldn't come up with a way to fix it. But God remembered, and God knows, because as soon as Adam and Eve fell, do you remember? In chapter 3, immediately he comes behind, and with the curse, he also gives a promise. The woman's seed. A child would come. God would send someone. And so God will not forget. God will not give up on his promise, on his grace, on his love for his creation, despite our sin, despite the troubles we have. God remembered. And I wonder if Noah remembered too and knew this promise that God would have a remnant and God would send a child a seed that would conquer the devil, that would turn this thing around, that would set us free, that would save us and heal us. And God's promises are always true. His word is faithful. And God renews his promise. He gives a new one after this terrible, treacherous flood that wiped out everyone on earth and the animals except for eight and two of every kind at least on this boat. He saved them through his church, his naval peace, if you will. And he did so with his word. And God is faithful. And he does so still today. This is the one who not only made all the waters, but then if I could sneak over to the gospel, and the seed comes in Jesus Christ. And while the disciples are in the boat on that night when there was a terrible storm, Jesus was walking along and it says he wanted to just keep going. But he said, oh, I better take care of those disciples. And he gets in the boat with them and the storm stops. You are in a boat in your baptism. You were called into this. You were named with Noah to be one of God's own. And through faith, in God's word, in his sacraments, you are both brought in and you are kept in his ark, his naval vessel, the one that would take you all the way through and the one who walked on the waters would keep walking all the way around through Galilee down to Judea to Jerusalem and to a cross. And it's the wood of the cross that would complete the promise that you are saved, that I'm saved, that your neighbors are among those that God wants to save. And the ark is big enough, this one is, with God's grace for all to come to faith is God's desire. We think of remembering as just a mental act but in God's case, it's much more than that. It's not just a thought as if the almighty, omniscient, all-knowing one could somehow not remember. It's in remembering that God works, that he sends his son, that Christ perseveres. And he goes all the way focused to finish his course to the cross, leaving an empty tomb to set us free. This is the epic event of all time, when God destroys the world and yet preserves Noah and his. 
The final picture we're given in Scripture, if we sneak over to the God, to the epistles, is that we are in a state where we still need a flood. We still need water that washes. And so we're called to daily remember our baptisms. It's a, by the way, a wonderful thing to do when you take a shower or a bath that you hopefully do often, if not daily, that this is also a picture of the washing. And so the prayer that some of you may remember from baptism, what's called the flood prayer, includes this, that our sins would be washed and our sins in our old sin nature would be drowned daily. I want you to stand with God in his judgment of sin and put aside your old flesh and that of the world so that they may be free also and saved and kept through the storm through the storms of the condemnation, the final judgment, the eternal judgment of sin. And God calls you out along with Noah. He calls people out along with Noah and all those who are in faith. He calls you in your baptism and he feeds you at his table. He who went to the cross is the one that washes you clean and takes care of all of that sin that destroys us. The confident sailors on the Sea of Galilee were shocked by Christ himself walking on these stormy waters. They were terrified. Perhaps they should be. This is the one who judges sin. Yet, he's the one who goes to the cross and pours out his own blood and washes you clean. God perseveres in grace. He was faithful to Noah he will never again send a flood like this to cover the whole earth. And he was faithful to know his aunt, to his family and even to breathing creatures. He included animals in his covenant. Didn't want to wipe them out again. Despite the evil, God cared for and preserved. God promises. God saves. God protects. God heals and God in his holy ark takes us home to paradise to be with him forever. We worship him. We thank him. And today we run to him in the safety of his grace and his love. In the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. So now may his peace in the midst of the in the midst of the tyrannies of the world. And in the midst of our own conspiracies of our old nature, keep you in this perfect peace in his holy ark and in his church to life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.